for faithful Catholics when it comes to moving home or going to university or even just going on holiday. It is a priority to find out where the nearest Catholic church is. Catholics don't tend to do much more investigation beyond that. They just find out where the nearest Catholic church is and start attending it. For Protestants, it is a very different world. I remember when I started university, a big topic among the Protestants on campus was, have you found a church yet? I remember going along to an event called the Find Your Church Evening. It was the kind of thing where lots of Protestant ministers promoted their little church and tried to recruit new members for it. Obviously, I wasn't looking to join a sect. I wanted to tell as many pastors one week into university that I had found the church. And in fact, that the church I had found was the one true church which Jesus Christ had founded when he was on earth. It was a great evening. You might be thinking to yourself, that was a bit full on, don't you think, Father? After all, aren't the different churches in our, our town just like different flavours of ice cream, you know? You just pick one you like, the one that suits you. And this morning, I want to talk about how far that is from the truth, my friends. Sunday Mass, Holy Mass, is completely different from the Protestant services, a different category. This week we're celebrating the feast day of the Holy Martyrs of England and Wales. When I was preparing for this feast day, I came to realize that just over 200 years ago, there would have been no Holy Mass offered publicly anywhere in our town, in London even. Mass would have been offered secretly, and those attending would be liable to punishment if they happened to be grasped up by their neighbours. Between the years of 1530 and 1790, Holy Mass was illegal in our country, and rather than attend a new religion founded by the wicked King Henry and his evil daughter Elizabeth, the faithful Catholics faced fines, exile, imprisonment, and even death. The number who were killed runs into the thousands, those imprisoned into the tens of thousands, and those fined into poverty, the hundreds of thousands. Those faithful Catholics, some of them our ancestors, were convinced that the Protestant worship just a hundred meters down the road was not just a different flavor of ice cream. They were convinced that something was happening at Holy Mass, which was not occurring at any of the new churches that the King had founded. What made the difference? The answer is found in our second reading today. The Holy Mass is not about what we are doing. It is about what Jesus Christ is doing through the words and actions of the priest. It's taken from the letter of the Hebrews. It starts with, It is not as though Christ had entered into a man-made sanctuary, which was only modelled on the real one, but it was heaven itself, so that he could appear in the actual presence of God on our behalf. St. Paul is saying that Jesus Christ on the day of his ascension, went into the heavenly presence of his almighty father, carrying his glorious wounds. It's like he says to almighty God, I suffered these wounds for the peop these people. Forgive them on account of my sacrifice. Now, all Christians believe that sins can only be forgiven on account of Christ's sacrifice, and that Jesus Christ perpetually presents that sacrifice to his father in heaven. There's no disagreement there, I, I should hope. But what does St. Paul then go on to say? He says, and I quote, Through the blood of Jesus, we have the right to enter the sanctuary by a new way which he has opened for us, a living opening through the curtain, 
that is to say, his body. St. Paul is saying, on account of Christ's sacrifice, we can enter the heavenly sanctuary. Through the sacrifice of Christ, we are able to go through the curtain and enter God's presence. Is he talking about something that will only occur at the end of our lives? No, not at all. This is a key point. He says in verse 21, So as we go in, let us be sincere in heart and filled with faith. As we go in. Or in other translations, here it says, So let us enter. He's talking about something the Christians were about to do. And that makes sense because originally this letter to the Hebrews would have been read out as a sermon just before the sacrifice of the Mass. St. Paul is saying, guys, get ready. We are about to go through to the Holy of Holies through the power of the sacrifice of Christ. He's saying, guys, this service that you are about to experience is a journey into a completely different realm about to pass through you are about to pass through into heaven through the sacrifice of christ my friends the great mystery of the holy mass is that as the priest whispers the words of consecration the veil to heaven is opened up and we pass through it into the presence of the holy of holies Almighty God. St. Paul says that those who pass through this veil should be filled with two qualities. They should be sincere in heart and filled with faith. We should be sincere in heart. That means at the moment of consecration, when the sacrifice of Christ is renewed, we need to have a heartfelt intention to lay our petitions before the throne of God. Lay it all honestly before him. Because at the moment of consecration, it is possible for your petitions to be united with the offering that our Lord presents perpetually to his Father in heaven. And we should be filled with faith. That means we need to have great confidence that at the moment of consecration, we do truly pass through the veil and enter the heavenly court, even if there are crying children around us, and if if you're feeling hot, or you know, or if there's some some ache in your knees, ask God to increase your faith that at Holy Mass, your petitions, your needs, they can be joined to the perfect heavenly offering of Christ. So, in conclusion. What takes place here at St. Andrew's every Sunday at Holy Mass is not one flavour of Christianity, one type of worship. It is, in fact, the type of worship because it is the worship of Jesus Christ. It is joining Jesus Christ in his ascension into heaven, joining Jesus Christ in his prayer to his almighty Father. The martyrs of England realise this. They realise that no matter how attractive the new religion of Henry was, it wasn't heaven uniting with earth, and it didn't even claim to be that. These holy martyrs are a shining example to us in a town that is filled with hundreds of so-called churches and ways of worshipping God. They remind us that in the church we choose to attend we shouldn't be looking for entertainment or fantastic sermons or supposed miracles or even a fantastic music ministry. This is because God has established a way by which he wishes to be worshipped. And it is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which very shortly will be made present for our benefit on this holy altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.